So on this connecting risk and resilience thing, I just want to offer a couple of really brief comments. And Susie and Igor were all very relieved knowing that I had to catch the 220 shuttle that I can't really go on as I want to do. Um, so uh, it seems to me that there are a couple of things that we're still, even though it's complicated enough already what we're trying to do, there are a couple of things we should be bringing in that still aren't brought in. One of them is we have not really, in my opinion, adequately addressed the issue of vulnerability and how it relates to risk and resilience. And I know that in some frameworks, vulnerability is, is a component of risk assessment. I personally think it's unfortunately more complicated than that. And I think that that's part of the conversation and needs to be brought in. Um, a second thing which uh, I can't remember if people have mentioned but certainly hasn't been front and center in thinking about resilience is the effects of cascading events. Um, multiple co-occurring sequences of uh, exposures that can, in fact, really um, change the, the picture of resilience in communities. Uh, and then it was mentioned this morning, but I think it's a serious point, how are we bringing in uncertainty? Uh, in this. And it's not just uncertainty about climate events or uncertainty about other shocks. It's also the uncertainty that exists about understanding the components and characteristics of systems that make them vulnerable and resilient. Um, where are we getting that information? It itself has uncertainties. So um, the other thing I'll just say is trying to think about where you may want to go with the conversations. And I know the organizers have a lot of better ideas than I do about that. But it strikes me that there are, um, you know, some, one thing that would be really important here is to realize in the time available, you're, gonna, you're still going to leave with multiple frameworks and ways of thinking about this. And something that can be valuable is to look across these frameworks, try to abstract a little bit from them and think about where are their common points of uh, agreement and common needs, for example, for methods. Um, I just finished a project working on vulnerability assessment, you know, and as, if anybody, you know, those of you working in the field know that everybody has their favorite eight or 10 or 12 step process that you have to go through. But looking across all those, we sort of identified three common sets of methods. One has to do with stakeholder engagement and how you use and work with stakeholders to collect information about the systems that they know better than any, anyone else to better understand what vulnerability and pre-existing characteristics might be. Similarly, there needs to be methods that are for stakeholder engagement that really involve them in thinking through what are the consequences of impacts. Um, a second area of methods that we worked on for that was tailoring climate information. So there's a lot of sort of um, climate information and in, say the, the big model archives that has not yet been adequately mined, it's really a data mining activity, to understand things about impact relevant um, climate conditions. Um, and then, um, you know, there's a third that really has to do with impacts modeling itself where you're trying to understand. So you have a change in the physical environment, say climate, hydrology, um, uh, ecosystem change, how does that then affect something that people are more connected to, agriculture, water resources, uh, human health, and those that oftentimes involves a range of models of different kinds of complexity. So that's just a typology of three sets of methods, the stakeholders, the exposure information, and the information on impacts that seem to be needed by all vulnerability assessment frameworks. I don't know if there are common things across risk and resilience, but I, I would urge you to try to think about not resolving differences, but thinking about what's common and what's needed um, to work better. Um, a second area of, of convergence, which I think um, could involve one of the breakout groups, um, <clears throat> has to do with thinking about the connection between changes in climate and, say, the engineering community or the risk community that's really looking at spe infrastructure-specific things. And I think Marie is going to talk about that. Um, it's a really important area. It comes up in, in my work all the time. How can we better, how can engineers, they ask, better connect to climate scientists and use 
the available climate science, which is far more than people are admitting, to understand changes in return periods of different types of impact events. And I think that could be a, how to work together to identify the thresholds, how to work together to better characterize what we know in climate science would be valuable. Uh, and then a third area, which I think is obvious and comes out of some of the conversations today, was the connection between the people who are practitioners, who are working on resilience in communities, and the global change scientists to better understand where those two worlds connect so that we're not building infrastructure that in 20 or 30 years isn't going to be fit for purpose uh, or setting up communities to fail in the longer term. I take Roger's point that there, are, there is work to be done on understanding how global change is going to affect resilience building in the sort of longer term, 20, 20 years and beyond. Uh, and that, I think, could be a really fruitful conversation amongst the people who are here. So uh, my shuttle awaits. Um, uh, just one question since you're leaving. Uh, I think it's very important to get at least uh, your ideas on the uh, difference between vulnerability and resilience and vulnerability and risk, because as you mentioned, and we had discussion, for risk people, um, vulnerability is part of risk assessment. Risk is threat, vulnerability, consequences. For climate change people, it's slightly different. And I think it's important, especially since we're on climate change, global change institute, this climate focus to really at least all of us to understand how you see it, since you, of course, climate change a guru. <laughs> I hope not. Um, I mean, that's a huge question, Igor, and that's sort of like a, a half-day panel, it seems to me. But um, in, in, my, in my own work, what I've tried to do is come up with ways of explaining vulnerability and working with stakeholders about vulnerability that enable them to see that vulnerability is largely a consequence of decisions that they make. Because there's a tendency for people to focus on the climate events and say, oh, my vulnerability comes from some event outside without realizing that there are a lot of decisions that they're making all the time that affect the pre-existing state of the infrastructure or community or whatever it is, that they have a lot of ways to influence. And so, you know, to me, any method that can help people understand their role in improving the situation is going to be good. So I don't know how that directly affects to the way that in risk assessment you conceive of vulnerability. I know that it's, it's also a condition that's pre-existing, yeah. um, but it, it's, I know it's also more complicated than that. Yeah, vulnerability is part of the system that threat can affect and result in risk. So that's how, I guess, the roadshare, of course, uh, have been longer there, but this is how we see it. But in climate change literature, I kind of get the impression that usually vulnerability means integrated threat and vulnerability in kind of risk terms. But what, how you explain it makes perfect sense to me. I guess the devil is in details how you quantify it, and that's where right. mess comes into the play. Well, and where, and where there's still a lot of conversation to have. So unfortunately, yeah, you I really do have to go because the shuttle <laughs> is leaving. Yeah, I know the, the organizers worked very hard to get this to work out this way. So, uh, But thank you all. It's really been a pleasure. I've met a lot of new people and really have enjoyed the meeting. So good luck. Thank you.